This is Activity 9, Speech Exploration Continued, the last lecture by Randy Pausch. So this is one where we are going to be looking at another speech that is not a commencement speech. Activity 9 has us looking at Randy Pausch's lecture uh, called The Last Lecture, although that's not the name he gave it. Remember, as you watch this 10-minute video, that you want to also continue to think about what Ms. Ruggles said in the last screencast about the author, audience, purpose, triangle, this rhetorical triangle where the author is focusing on the audience and the purpose. The audience is also focusing on the author and the purpose, and the purpose comes to you from that author and the audience. So Randy Pesh originally gave this lecture. It was much longer at Carnegie Mellon University, which is a very prestigious university. He was a lecturer there for many years. This is a small clip, you're welcome, about 10 minutes long on the Oprah show. As you watch the video, please keep in mind that the speaker, Randy Pausch, the audience, and we're looking at the people at the Oprah show, the original attendees at the university, which were about 400 people, and who else be thinking about that? The message is delivered and the intended purpose of the speech. So we want you to uh, consider some of the things now that you know from last week's speeches and from the speeches you've been listening to this week and reflect also on the activities that you completed with Remember the Titans for Activity 8. You're going to be answering the questions below based only on the last lecture by Randy Pausch. See how Pausch addresses these um, ideas of the attendees, the audience, the messages delivered, and the purpose. Please note that if I have something in bold, it's worth looking at twice and uh, notice the italicized areas as well. So, first question. What is Randy Pausch's purpose in discussing the elephant in the room? Why do you think that Pausch brought this up at the very beginning of his speech? This is seriously within the first 20 seconds of the speech. This elephant in the room, this idea is this idea that everyone can see, but no one's talking about. He goes ahead and talks about this big thing that's happening in his life that he assumes everyone knows. So why is he bringing it up? consider his reasons. Who is Pasha's audience in this speech? You know where he's giving this audience, uh, this speech, right? It's on the Oprah show. So what other audiences does he reference in his speech? And then consider, is his speech topic appropriate for the audience? Yes or no. Give me at least one reason why you consider this, why you think so. Explain how Pausch uses the symbolism of brick walls as part of his message. So he will get into what the brick wall is in his life and what he did about it. Why is this important to his overall message to the audience? Think about how the symbol of a brick wall might be used well in a speech. Choose one story, Pausch uses quite a few, that Pausch uses in his speech and explain the message of that story. How does that message relate to the purpose of a speech? When you guys are writing your own commencement speeches, you're going to be putting in stories. Most good speeches have stories that draw the audience in. Why is he using this particular speech that you've chosen? What is his purpose? Why does he think this is a good speech to include? Does it help his message? Is it supposed to draw on the audience? What is the original occasion for the last lecture? Do you feel that the use of the same speech for a nationally televised daytime show is appropriate? Remember where he originally gave this speech. And now this is a very different area, right? We're looking at a nationally televised daytime show that there are at least 200 people in the audience and thousands, if not millions more watching at home. Why is the speech that he gives in one location appropriate for this new location? Or is it? You could argue either way. Please give examples. 
And then finally, how is Pasha's speech similar to a commencement speech? Think about the speaker. Consider ethos. That's the authority of someone to speak on a subject. So, who is Pausch? And if you're not sure from his speech, do a very quick Google search. It'll come up very quickly. Why is he the person to be speaking on the last lecture? Where does he get the wisdom? Why would people listen to him? Who is the intended audience? Now, again, at this point, you have listened to the entire lecture. Is the audience you thought at the beginning of his speech the same audience that you think it is at the end of the speech? Who is the intended audience? When Pausch is speaking, who is he speaking to? What's his purpose? Why? Why is he giving this speech? Why is this important? What is he hoping his audience pulls from the message, from the stories he's giving during this speech. And then think about the organizational cues. Now, organizational cues are going to be the way he tells his audience what is going to be happening, where they should be with this speech. You all have used these in your speeches already. You might say, first, I'm going to talk about a topic from my childhood, right? You're telling the student or the, your, your audience where you're starting. Then you might say, secondly, I'm going to be talking about my parents. When you say something like secondly, you're cueing your audience to know that you're moving on from the first thing and going to be talking about something different. And you might say something like, lastly, I'll be discussing my dog, right? When you say lastly, it's cueing your audience that you're going to be wrapping things up. Another organizational cue might be you saying, in conclusion, that's a pretty common one. In conclusion, I am concluding my speech. You as an audience now know that I'm wrapping things up. These are organizational cues that a good speaker lets his audience know where he is in his speech. You want them always to be able to follow along. So that concludes activity nine. Uh, hopefully this will prepare you for your graduation speech as you're writing and kind of increase your understanding of a compelling speech.